welcome to the program, George Buza. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank you for talking with us today. Of course, you know, you've been acting for a number of years, countless credits to your name. Uh, but a lot of people remember you most for the voice of the beast on the X-Men animated series. And of course, X-Men 97 is coming up in just a matter of days. We are days yes. away from the launch. But that show, of course, stuck with so many people back in the 90s. People love that show. And your character was just that voice. I personally feel that if you hadn't voiced the beast in that certain manner, Kelsey Grammer would have not been offered the role in live action because <laughs> it's a very, very distinct voice. When you were putting that voice together, was there a specific, like, were you looking for certain speech patterns based off of the script? Well, I was trying to make him sound very erudite. So there was a, a concentration on uh, pronunciation and uh, also the, uh, the vocabulary. Uh, Beast used a, a lot of very big words and uh, a lot of the scientific stuff that came along was uh, enough to stump me. And especially in the new series, there was a lot of what I would call uh, gibberish. <laughs> it was all <laughs> science related. <laughs> so they, they encouraged us to use our, our own voices because they didn't want anything cartoony or uh, unrealistic, really. They, they wanted uh, everybody's natural voice. And all you did was just fine tune it to the character yeah no totally well a number of memorable episodes came out of that show i know a lot of them were based on the original comic books but there was one that they wrote specifically for your character that was just basically whole cloth just an idea that they created for the show and that is the beauty and the beast episode from season two such a heartbreaking episode and we get to see the beast go through so many like a range of emotions during that and just the sadness at the end of him and Carly, you know, realizing they can't be with each other. Now, I know that because of the way it was recorded back then, you only recorded separately. But with that episode, were you able to record with the woman who was voicing Carly at all? Oh, I can't remember, but I'm sure we did. Yeah, because uh, when we had two person scenes, they tried to get us together. It was the uh, the large groups that they discontinued because it was so time consuming and it defeated the purpose. They thought that there would be spontaneity if everybody was recording together. But because of the technology back then, everybody's microphone had to be turned off before the next person spoke. Yeah. So there was this huge gap between lines. So there was no spontaneity at all. All it was was a five hour session that could have been done in an hour. And so they stopped <laughs> doing it. But whenever there were uh, two person scenes, it was a lot simpler. And and I think, yeah, we did record together. Yeah, that must have been for you, though, with that particular episode, getting that script, that must have been really exciting for you. Almost like a gift to have Absolutely. such so much different emotions and so many scenes that you could work with in the Beast in that episode. No, I agree. That was uh, one of those things that as a character actor, you don't get a lot of those coming along. You know, you're either playing the heavy and uh, doing a lot of... Uh, action or in the case of this you know the, the scientist who's constantly uh, spewing gibberish and you know injecting the the sanity as it were into a, an insane world uh, to all of a sudden have this kind of real emotional scene to play it was a, indeed a gift yeah well you know, really heartbreaking. Even to this day, I rewatched it the other night. And I'm like, wow, it still does it. it still hits me. But uh, of course, with the new series, X-Men 97, a large amount of the cast is back for it. And you got to go back and record in the same studios with the same engineers. Oh. Did it feel like you're know, like a talking head song, same as it ever was? Or was this oh, was absolutely. like... The, the first day when we went back, it was like being in euphoria, you know, it was just so exciting to be back in the same mil milieu. And it was a double edged thing as well, because that address was the first place that I lived when I moved to Canada. Wow. There was an old house there that leaned and I rented it with a couple of other actor friends of mine. 
because we were working at the theater that was across the street. Right. And uh, the address of that house was 49 Ontario Street. And that's the address of the studio because they tore down the house and they built this huge monolith. So I was always joking with the receptionist there that, you know, you're, you're sitting in my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you just keep coming back home as every, oh, every couple of decades yeah. you're showing back up at home. It's Although crazy. it is slated for demolition and uh, oh. there, rumor has it they're going to be putting up some high rise condo. Of course, of course they are. That's it's Toronto. No, oh, absolutely. It's, anything that's taken down, they put up a big condo. That's just what it is. You go through the uh, Gardner Expressway, and you're like in a tunnel. Yeah. There's condos that are sixty stories high on either side. All of a sudden, there's darkness. There's no sun. <laughs> yeah, you pretty know? much. It is. Everything it disappears is crazy. except the glass on either side. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. It's so weird thinking about the gardener. Cause I always, I always look at it and go, it's like, I remember when I could see everything from the gardener. Now you can't see anything. No, I know you can't see the lake. It doesn't exist. Oh my God. Yeah. Now when you, because you guys had to re audition for X-Men 97, correct? Oh yeah. They gave you the original, like the exact same audition copy as the first time. If my memory serves correct. Yes. It looked very familiar. Oh, my and it God. was so, a scene, the courtroom scene that Beast had when he was arguing his uh, his case. And I remember it very, very uh, vividly. Now, that I know were the that exact same size we had for the original audition. Back in the original audition, you know, you realized, oh, this is X-Men when you read it. Oh, you yeah. were the only one. This time now, was it like... Were you giving the exact same performance or did you like, I'm going to switch it up this time? Well, I think the, uh, the whole purpose of the audition was to see what our voices were like 30 years past. Mm. And, uh, you know, did we sound like old geezers or were we still passable as uh, the characters originally were? Well, that's the great thing about uh, animation is that you can yeah, you, you don't go have back to look to your best. Yeah, exactly. You go back to characters <laughs> decades after, as long as you got the same yeah. voice. Totally. It's amazing. But, uh, you know, looking at your career in voice acting, I noticed, you know, of course, Beast, you did Chief Chirpa back in the 80s in Ewoks. I remember that show. These days, you know, you're doing the Eleanor Wonders Why is Grandpa Rabbit. Do you feel that you just give off a furry animal kind of vibe? <laughs> the cast is a lot of furry animals. <laughs> well, animation is filled with furry animals, so <laughs> it's hard to avoid that. Yeah, true. But it's more the grandpa roles that are coming my way these days, which I love because I have 11 grandkids. And uh, several of them live with me, and uh, I enjoy every minute. So I, I love being grandpa. Bring it on. You know? That's great. That's great, man. Now, uh, I know also in recent years, you've become a bit of a puzzler. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, the uh, crossword puzzles I did uh, because it was something to do on movie sets while you were waiting. and There would be hours where you'd have to just occupy yourself. So I started doing crossword puzzles. And uh, now I got into jigsaw puzzles. There's something my wife's friend gave her a jigsaw puzzle to do. Now she's got vertigo. So she started doing it and got all dizzy and says, I can't continue with this. So I went in and I did a couple of pieces and that was all it took. And now I can't stop. You're hooked, man. <laughs> You're hooked. How many, how many puzzles would you say you've gotten in the past like year? Oh, I would say maybe 30 or more. Oh my gosh. Are you getting like the big, big ones that like take up well, a whole I do table? The thousand piece puzzles. I got a puzzling board that I bought. Oh. It's got felt on it so that the things don't slip down and it tilts up so that you can sit there and have a, an easel of puzzle in front of you. Well, that's, that's pretty good. I didn't know that there was but, an actual puzzling table. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's a table. There's all kinds of things for puzzlers. This is a new thing. I've only been doing it for about the last year. Wow. And, uh, well, it's a great way to pass the time. Of course, definitely. Well, it definitely. also keeps your mind sharp, which is something that us seniors are very concerned about these days. I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you want to, you want to keep sharp. Well, you, you're, you seem like you're still sharp as a whip, sir. You definitely well, do. Well, hopefully it stays that way. <laughs> <laughs> 
But of course, in the past few years, uh, pretty much ever since the X, uh, the X Men animated series got put up to Disney Plus, you know, and the attention came back to this, you guys have been doing the convention circuit, and with this particular convention, the Toronto Comic Con, March fifteenth to seventeenth, it's in Toronto, which is where you live. So it must be nice that you're going to be able to have the experience of having the convention, but get to sleep in your own bed at night. Yeah, and to come home, you know, instead of going to a hotel. And it's uh, something that we've been wanting to do because this is our hometown. We got such great receptions every year that we've gone. You know, we uh, had receptions uh, that were like unbelievable when we went to Wales. And then we did the uh, Comic Cons in Texas and Los Angeles and Ca huge, huge conventions. And that the people would be lining up at our tables. And uh, it's kind of nice to, you know, be recognized in your own uh, city of residence and you know, see how the crowds are there. We're doing a one day signing only. Oh, geez. One day signing. Well, I'm pretty sure it's going to be packed. The lines are going to go out the door. But with conventions these past few years that you've been doing them, it's given you a chance to reconnect with people you hadn't seen in years, right? Well, the cast, yeah. I mean, some of them I saw because I still am active in the business. So we run into each other before the pandemic at auditions and things. But, you know, once the uh, the pandemic hit, all that whole socializing at auditions, you didn't even care if you got the job. You just knew that, hey, we're going to see everybody and we'll go out to coffee. It's kind of like the uh, seniors at the mall. <laughs> <laughs> For us, it was the audition and you run into people you hadn't seen in a while and you go out for coffee and chew the fat for a while. And it was a, a social gathering. You know, a lot of them didn't even care if they got the job or not. It was just a chance to see everybody. Yeah, no, totally. But like also you've gotten the chance to catch up with certain people you'd lost contact with in years because you're going to cities that you wouldn't regularly be going to. I, right? I actively started looking up people that I'd gone to school with who I knew lived in other cities and got in touch with them. And I, some of them I hadn't seen in 52 years. They were old roommates. Uh, I ran into one. Well, my old friend from university lives in Chicago and he runs the, uh, the North Light Theater there. He's been the executive producer and uh, artistic director there for like the last 20 or 30 years. And I hadn't seen him in quite a long time. So when we did the Chicago Con, we reconnected and I brought up some names that I thought, you know, I wonder whatever happened to my old roomies. He says, oh, well, I got the, the number for one of them. So I called him and hadn't seen him in 52 years. And we reconnected there in uh, Rhode Island and then I asked him about another roommate of ours and he says, yeah, he lives in Washington state. So I got in touch with him. Hadn't spoken to him since 1972. Thank so God. that was, uh, all these things are, are very exciting to, you know, be able to reconnect and also the connections with the fans. Cause we, when we were doing the original series, we had no idea how popular the show was. That wasn't something that was shared with us. It was only until the uh, producers gathered our all the cast for the very first reunion that they told us about the piles of mail that were stacking up at uh, the studio. Uh, we never knew about that. The fans were writing in by the ton. Oh, my gosh. Well, you, you do now, thankfully. You know about the fans now. It's very touching. I mean, that's what the greatest joy of all is meeting the fans, and realizing that your show had an impact on their life and that they found refuge in your show and that your performance in some way helped them. This is yeah. not something that you're ever really aware of. No, totally. And it's a show that people have shared with their kids now that it's on Disney plus yeah. and it's brought back the series. The series is coming back. We can't wait to see it. Really looking forward to it and looking forward to you coming to the Toronto comic con as well. Thank you so much for talking with me, George. It's been, well, it's been a thanks, pleasure Andrew. talking with you.